When we had last left this cop, they were inside of a local bookstore on the city streets of Ravishol Martinez district. Hopefully I got that right. And there did they discover a strange lady running the bookstore who seemed to care very little for her child's well-being because her child was in fact outside on the cold city streets hawking for some of the sweet, sweet, super cool books inside. And by some miraculous turn of events, did our hero manage to make the world just a little bit better by helping the kid come inside and convincing her mother to be just a little bit better and <laughs> also uncovered some darker things perhaps about the whole familial situation and the father of the family. But nonetheless, things were maybe better? This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Let us oh, and also we got a we got a hat. It looks like a cowboy hat, but it's a it's technically a fedora. Right? Yeah. Well it's a Dick Mullins hat. It looks like a cowboy hat in uh up here, right? Anyway, nonetheless, let's investigate some more of the bookstore. And you know what? I went back and looked where the the pawn shop is supposed to be, so we're gonna try and find it for real this time. Good lord, hopefully we find it. Fingers crossed. What's this? Oh. Man from Helmdal series. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Helmdal somewhere. Storekeep Tell me about the Muscle Man books. Oh gosh, are we going to get like a uh, a physique interaction here? Oh, Man from Hjelmdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. She looks at the book with some disdain. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? They sound like um like Conan shit, right? Conan the Barbarian. Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives. <laughs> epic narratives, yeah, always so fucking terrible. <laughs> I like that that's in there. All those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good, which one should I start with? <laughs> what does it matter? They're all the same. She rolls her eyes, then fiddles with her pendant. However, the customer is always right, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend... Oh my god. Hjemdollerman, the man from Hjemdoll. <laughs> it's... Fuck me. <laughs> it's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Man, it costs nine quatlus? Shit. I want to buy the Hjemdollerman book. Look through the display. Rows and rows of Hjem Dollarman blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hjemdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hjemdal. Return to Hjemdal. And the uh, solipistic, or er, solipsistic. Jesus, I've never seen that word. This, remember at the beginning of this, I, th I said that the writing in this game might be too smart for me. Also, in a very, like, tactile, literal way. <laughs> I don't even know this word. <laughs> uh, man from Hjelmdal and the Hjelmdal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hjelmdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hjelmdal and the False God. Man from Hjelmdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hjelmdal, the Hjelmdal Colonies. Man from Hjelmdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hjelmdal and the Snow Crabs. Delicious. Half Light, medium success. Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. What? Huh. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Hjelmdal in Hell. Man from Hjelmdal and the Forest of Slaves. Man from Hjelmdal under the lake. Man from Hjelmdal. Hjelmdal burning. There's even the trial of death. 
a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hjelmdalerman, and so much more. Do any of these books call out to me pain threshold? Wow, 72 fuck it, 72%. Let's try it. A hey, pain threshold medium success. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Ugh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hjelmdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. <laughs> it's a little on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> Just a bit. Inland Empire, medium success. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyum Dollarman lies a bonfire, casting shadows in the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hjelmdal and the Devil Woman. Hmm, aren't all women devil women? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> what if I say that? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a wretched thing to say, but the context here is so fucking dumb that I'm tempted to say it. Fuck it. Let's. What's the worst that could happen? We get like some terrible, like, like a misogynist thought for our thought cabinet, and then we can like throw it out if we want. All right. Hmm. Aren't all women devil women? <laughs> Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. There's also some sort of snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen chest shoulder region. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Helmdahl novels. <laughs> oh god, I want to buy the Man from Helmdahl and the Devil Woman. <laughs> Shit. Alright. And we could come back and buy those books again without, yeah, without getting the checks. Fuck, but that's a lot of money and I have like no money. How will I read about this muscle man and all of his fun exploits? All right. Let's see. What's over here? Gift books and molten candy. What is molten candy? I've heard of it before, but I have no idea what it is because I'm a dumb man. All right. Let's go over here. <laughs> not, not to put the emphasis. <laughs> I mean, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> let's go up here. What have we got? Oh, look, there's a little friend here. Look at this little friend. Hey, who is this? This is a little man up here. Do you see this little, like, smiling man, I think? Or maybe they're in, like, some state of discontent. I can't tell. Shelf of crime novels. I wonder if reading these would make me better at solving crime or whatever. The, probably not, right? Probably not. Not in this game. Maybe in, like, Fallout or some shit, but not in this game. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name, Dick Mullen, over and over. Isn't that the case with most of these, right? Yeah, every single bookshelf that we found have been like all repetitive iterations of the same book, or the same, like, from the same franchise. And like, the, the only time that that wasn't the case was when it wasn't books at all, it was board games, right? Huh. Maybe that speaks to... Do you think that that's intentional and that's meant to speak to, like, the bookstore? And how... And how she's handling it, right? Or how she's... Yeah, how she's handling it, right? Because of how her husband is telling her about how business works and shit. Right? So then you kind of get all this just, like, bullshit. Huh. Maybe. Maybe. I would imagine that's the case, right? Especially given... You know... <laughs> You'd imagine a writer, someone who's writing for a game, and in fact, the, the person who wrote this, I'd imagine, would would have read a book or two and have a few thoughts about bookstores. <laughs> All right. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Storm Keep, uh, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime, robberies, murders. She lowers her voice. Even... Sexual crimes. 
We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Really? Really? Let's look through the display. Crime fiction is a disgrace, an asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes and the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Endurance, medium success. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. Shelf of crime novels. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of the books found on the shelf? Wow, that is so wild. Huh. We have definitely gotten all this text as like a perspective from our character, right? Huh. We must have a fucking family then, huh? If this is to be like some sort of um, hinting at our unreliable narration in action, right? We must have a family and maybe a child or two or multiple. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. Let's look at them all. Maybe we'll get some more hints about who we are. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. Oh, oblivion. <laughs> I'm sorry. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pile. Pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen? Dick Mullen dies? Oh no. Turns out he faked it to solve a case. <laughs> Are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become... The murderer. Esprit de corps. Challenging success. Come on. This is not the way real police solves crimes. The real police are some 20 kilometers away, sitting in an armored motor carriage. Oh shit. And we're cluing into them now, right? Right as we trip balls. Mac Torson. A bald man turns toward a lean man and pats him on the back. Come on, Chester, tell the story again. Again? Man, I tell that one at least once a month. It's not that interesting, Chester replies. The fuck it is, the bald man replies. And these guys haven't heard it. He mentions to the civilian sitting in the back seat. You see, Chester here, he pokes his finger at the lean man. Chester faked his own death once. Gosh, why? One civilian looks on, amazed. The bald man bellows a reply. A very fucking dangerous case. Ain't that right, Chester? They almost got you that time. Yeah, sure, came close, Chester mutters in return, then turns to the rapt listener. All right, so I was tailing this guy, Francis the Shoe. The inside of the motor carriage is thick with cigarette smoke. Outside, it starts to rain. Wow, Chester McLean is Dick Mullen? Inland Empire, easy success. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. 
who is Dick Mullen? Reaction speed, medium 10. Oh shit. Who is Dick Mullen? 28% success chance. We're gonna fail this. Come on, give me some XCOM luck. Oh my god, 28% success chance. <laughs> Reaction speed, medium success. Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic hard-boiled phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Hmm. Why does this speak to me? Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? That's probably right. I'm a complicated guy full of contradictions. No, it's gotta be something else. <laughs> Perhaps you're drawn to the dark and noirish atmosphere. Yeah, I'm pretty intense. I'm all about that dark stuff. Nah, that's not it either. Is it because the smoking <laughs> is it because the smoking dame and the slinky red dress on the cover is giving you a hard on? <laughs> All right, that's definitely it. What? No, that's not what's happening. Yes, it is. The bulge in your pants is embarrassingly obvious. Oh no! The smoking dame gave me a hard on. <laughs> Reaction speed. <laughs> Electrochemistry, easy success. Relax, it's not that bad. Also, this means your blood flow is returning to normal. Good news, really. <laughs> Kim talks. Something the matter, detective. Nope, all good here. Casually adjust your pants. <laughs> Kim, would you describe this woman as a smoking dame? <laughs> Let's ask him. <laughs> The lieutenant narrows his eyes and contemplates the book for a moment. I would certainly say she fits that description, providing that's your type. I want to buy this Dick Mullen novel. Shit. This is the way that we find out who Dick Mullen is. Man, yo, look at the thickness on that fucking dick. <laughs> Did you like that? Oh, that was good. All right. Well, yeah, we'll have to get that. We'll have to get that sick dick. Let's see, what's over here? What's, what's all this? It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. <laughs> all right. A quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. Perfect for all of the uh, cops with high fascism. Maybe that's a lot of them these days. <laughs> oh! Shelf of... <laughs> this game is bringing out something in me. <laughs> shelf of biographies. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Storekeep, anything of note in this shelf? I would say, the woman hums to herself, the greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic powers. Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure, but surely I don't have to tell you that. She waves her hand, as if casting aside the thought. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to pre-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest. So you recommend it. Great, I don't need to know anymore. <laughs> huh. An innocence is a very influential historical figure. You did have to tell me that because I am a fool. 
The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Fascinating. Though I guess it depends on who they're examining, right? Like, what if you examine someone who genuinely, genuinely did good and you're just trying to be contrarian or whatever, right? I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I digress. Whenever did contrarianism sell well? Oh! <laughs> I thought this was about which of these innocences is, is the coolest and greatest. Perhaps for a layman, she scoffs, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. So you recommend it? Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. Inland Empire, easy success. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important, somehow. There's something personal inside. Oh shit, really? Huh. Inland Empire is telling me I should get this book. Well, fuck, I'm sorry, Inland Empire, but I'm fucking broke. I'm just looking. Let's look through the display shelves. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. My God, it is? <laughs> Suddenly... <laughs> Sun <laughs> Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic, true love story of Jacob Ur and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. I've never seen the surname Averbrook in my life, but I actually really enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry, fun fact there, just a little bit of an interjection. High Speed Love chronicles the top romance, or chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Ur. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Ur's life story, you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called the Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Reva Sholian radio personality, Guillaume, isn't that how he's, Guillaume? <laughs> Fuck me. Isn't it like Guillaume? Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. You're interrupting by- or you're interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse though, but not too long. Suggestion medium success. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time. Time is commerce. I'm interested in that Greatest Innocence book. No, I'm not. Though, maybe I am. <laughs> Alright. What's this shit? Some drawings? Oh, it's a map wall! Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board, hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. Huh. Yeah, it has. The maps look old and faded. Oh, we need a fucking map! Oh, shit. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinde. Insulind? A map of Ravishol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Insulind. Isn't this the, um, the country we're in? Insulind is the country, Ravishol's the city, and Martinez is the district, right? Let's look at the, uh, the map of Insulind. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Le Caillou. You are here. Another, far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile des Fantômes. 
What else? Ozone, Laurentide, Face Salamer, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Isolindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. Inland Empire, easy success. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou. In a bookstore, it's you. Huh. Shivers, medium success. Radiating outwards from you. The Suzerain Ravishol, with a radius of 80 kilometers, still the crown jewel of this Isola, would be barely visible. Squint first. Can you see cities on the islands? Holy shit, we're tripping. You can. On Caillou, Ravishol, a single black star. On Ozone, Fon de la Air, and Vermando. On Archipelago, Archipelagos, Croyon Moral, Villiers, on Semenin, Olduvai, Oldu and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. Empathy, medium success. Lost little pearls of light, tiny fires in the dark. Look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Mundai is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. What is an azimuth? I have no idea. Samara is the east azimuth. Sol is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Inland Empire, easy success. Connections to other worlds. Worlds past. The Insulindian. Unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. So like other continents? Encyclopedia. Impossible failure. Wow. What a high encyclopedia check here. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you, and very, very far away. Ooh, that was actually really cool how we failed it that way, right? Conceptualization. Impossible failure. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. Holy shit, failing this has actually led to some really, like, cool-ass uh, text? Okay. Look at the map of Ravishol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Les Jardins, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Ravishol East. And west of the river? Koron. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then, <laughs> Koron, it's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then, Faubourg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then, Coal City. It's the worst. Martinez. It's so small, you can't even see it on the map. No? Wait. There it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Ravishol Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. Shivers, medium success. No, Coal City is worse. A charred limb, rain falls on its slick black streets. And then there's the burnt-out quarter 
in the heart of Jamrock. Is it cold in this bookstore, or is it just you? Volition, easy success. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. Look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? <laughs> that old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that w never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Oh, they gentrified it. What happened then? They didn't get far. For some reason, a shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Wow, one that we can actually afford. We could try and steal it, yo! Interfacing check, but we, we have such a low chance. I'll buy it, it's only 90 cents. I want to buy the map of Martinez. Look, I bought something. She nods. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Cool. So do we actually have a map? Interact. Map of Martinez. A worn and torn map of the Martinez area, dating from 48. A title in the top reads, Bienvenue à Revachol. It's a bit out of date, as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions appropriately touristy to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner, and we're in year 51. Trace a path through the grid shivers. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Saint... Rue de... Do you... S if it's with a French accent, don't you say Saint instead of Saint? Maybe? Rue de Saint Ghislaine and Rue de Saint Cispar, over Saint Brune and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Tutorial Agent, for a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal, then the map tab. Okay, let's put the map away. Also, our map is, um... Is our map not going to be correct because we're using an incorrect ma map? Could be. Let's take a peek. Holy shit! Look at this! Oh, this is the church! Wow, I fucking knew it! We are going over there at some point. Huh. I wonder if we get maps of more places. I'm not sure. Let's see, is this the Whirling and Rags? Yeah, it definitely is. Okay. Wow. Is this the entire game area? Just these little areas around here? Holy shit. Huh. I wonder. Because I could, I could see that being the case, although this is meant to be... A fairly lengthy game, right? We've spent so much time in just small areas talking and walking and shit, right? Oh, look, can we see? Oh, wow, look. It says where shit is. 
Mirror, yes. If I click on that, oh, okay, never mind. The hanged man, map wall, to try and steal maps, I guess. Okay, what's over here? Shelf of paranormal books. Oh shit, our Inland Empire is going to go off the chain. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Storekeep, what books are these? Hmm, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. She narrows her eyes. That wisdom is not for free. Right, she has some sort of uh, higher Inland Empire score too, remember? Didn't she allude to something like that with her pendant and all that at the beginning? I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, <laughs> no. Look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that work? It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway without even curing your cold or anything. Oh, okay. Wholeness, unity, balance. On the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Endurance, medium success. It's your own fault if you're ill. Got it. Does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. Oh, that sounds useful. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Sarai's tradition of using duck gall bla duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases pre and post factum apply nothing worth buying <laughs> well do i have a sexually transmitted disease i could see it inland empire medium success this is just mundane garbage what's even paranatural about this oh yeah i like that even inland empire is not fucking impressed about this shit Ooh, look, but we can try to, we can dig deep. Inland Empire, medium 10. Find something truly otherworldly. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudo-scientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as Le Territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venique or hand broom made from the leafy twig of a young birch tree from the near pale. What? Pain threshold, medium success. Even better if you can find someone else. Preferably a large man dressed in nothing but a towel to thrash you while you're spread naked and helpless on a cool slab. Sounds painful. Sounds invigorating. Sounds painful. It is supposedly invigorating and good for the circulation. What else? 
it also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pail. Didn't uh, the lady working at the frit say something about that? Like she was selling one that was aged in the pail. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. And what does this pale aged liquor do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. Really? I should probably get my hands on some of that. What else is in here? How is that possible? How is that possible? Is it any more improbable than anything else than human beings? What? Is it any more improbable than anything else than human beings put their faith? Oh, it's a typo. That human beings put their faith in. Fair enough. What else is in there? For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pale. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the perambula perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. Is the pale like a radioactive area or something? That's what it kind of sounds like, right? Huh. Especially given, like, the revolution or war or something from a while back? How bad was it? Did we, did, like, Ravishol have nuclear weapons used against it? Huh. Though maybe that's, I'm just reading into this because I've been playing uh, Fallout lately. <laughs> Alright, continue. Inland Empire, medium success. This is exactly what you need. Half-Light, medium success. I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper, but this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. Huh. Anything else of note? There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. Well, I certainly don't need that. I probably need that. <laughs> Let's sure I probably need that. Look at me, I'm a fucking disaster. I probably need that. Excuse me, sir, I believe you've been perusing that particular volume long enough. If you'd like to continue reading, I must insist you buy it. Ah, uh, it costs four twenty, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Alright, I wanna buy medicinal purposes of the pale. Nah, not for now. I don't have that kind of money. It does seem like an interesting buy. And Inland Empire over here suggested we buy one of these books, right? Hmm. Alright. What we got over here? Another boring book. Just discarded here. Fair enough. Okay. Let's head on... Ooh, right behind this curtain. What could be in here? Let's see. Closed curtains. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back Ooh. room is strictly for employees only. Voice acted. Plaisance calls out from the counter. <laughs> Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please, go back to browsing books. She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtain, the more alluring they become. Let's examine the strange cage-like trinket. You examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron, assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Whoa! This is some occult shit, huh? Aside from poking it, from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. 
Well, let's see what's back here. Pull open the curtains. There we go. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that! I told you it's off limits for the customers! Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Para psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid? Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. All right, I'll think about it for a while. I sense this place calling to me. You do? She grabs her pendant again, visibly shaken. My God! Even more reasons to not mess with the curtains! Just step away, dear sir! Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there! She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am so sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. This is about the curse? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now, please step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. You can't stop me! I'll open them! <laughs> no! She raises her hand to try and stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Half-light, medium success, lies. Rip them open, we say. Inland Empire, medium success. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Holy shit, everyone's telling me about these curtains. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Rip them apart this time for real! Wah! You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you! You are unleashing forces beyond your understanding! Lady, every force is beyond my understanding. Holy shit, what is in here? Let's equip our flashlight. Right, will we be able to see some weird shit? Oh my god. Kim, get ready. I'm going in. I'm going in hot, Kim. Oh, what the fuck? It's some sort of brain machine. There's a picture of a giant head! Was this place a salon? Huh. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head into such machine. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. <laughs> so says our physique. Wow, great. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Look, it's got some of these, I don't know what they're called, but they're in a lot of, um, everything. <laughs> these little notes. Warded door. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Physical instrument. What if you just break it down? Pain threshold challenging. Break down the door. Maybe I should break it down? But not before I strategize. Let's knock on the door. Oh, God, that was loud. Only an echo. No one is there. Maybe I should break it down, but not before I strategize. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. First, 
check your posture. Steady breathing, solid core. You've got this. With one shoulder forward, you're ready to smash into the door like a battering ram. Check your surroundings. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish. But the path to the door is clear. And what about the door? It's made of a solid block of wood. But it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with a carmine layer of dust. It should be doable. 58%. Preparation phase complete. All right, hang on. Let's check our inventory and stuff. Let's check. Do I have anything bringing down my pain threshold? No. All right. This is as fucking pain thresholdy as we're going to get, baby. Look at me go. I'm going right through this fucking shit. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you. Covering, yeah, we've seen that. It appears to be locked. 58%. Come on. Big money. Oh, I fucked it up. Uh-oh, I'm going to die. Oh! Oh, shit. <laughs> Pain threshold. Challenging failure. Oh, shoot. Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? Oh, God. I tried to breathe normally. This really wasn't the best idea, was it? I deserve this. My body deserves to suffer for being this weak and disappointing. Is that... Is that blood I'm seeing? Rub your forehead. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. Slap your face. I don't want anyone to see me cry. <laughs> I'm going to slap my face. Don't see me cry. Are you all right? The lieutenant steps closer, his eyes soft and worried. This looked pretty intense and painful, I must admit. What's going on there? An upset, high-pitched voice calls out from the bookstore. Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer. You can hear her take a frightened step backwards. Don't tempt the spirits or you'll damage the holy wards on the door. It barely looks like you've done any damage to the door. Uh, to the door, however, it's still locked and closed, covered in dozens of little charms and trinkets. Fuck. How do I get in here? I need to bust this shit down for real. At least it's a white check so we can come back. All right. Look, does Kim have anything to say about this? Yes. No, he doesn't. Shit. What about the lady? I need to get in there. Wait, hang on. What if I equip a pry bar? Can I pry bar a fucking door? I don't think so, but maybe? Let's give it a shot. Shit. Okay. Fuck, shit, shit, my ass. Shit. Okay, let's go over here. There's some weird fucking shit back there, huh? Hey. You've hurt yourself now. I told you not oh. to mess around back there. What are you even trying to accomplish, you fool? Nothing. I'm just terribly clumsy sometimes. Sorry. Rub your aching forehead. I thought it was obvious. I tried to smash through the door by using pure physical force. I need to know what secrets lie behind the door. It's part of a spiritual quest. I thought it was obvious. I tried to smash through the door by using pure physical force. You're only making things worse. Stop it. Be compelled to look at books. She fiddles with her pendant. Go to them. All right. She's trying to control me with her pendant. And it's not working. <laughs> Plaisance, I'll be back to smash down that door when I get a little bit higher pain threshold. Let's see. Does the kid have anything to say about the creepy door? Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? No, nothing. All right. Man, I wonder if this place was not always a bookstore. I mean, obviously, but I mean, while they owned it, right? Maybe they owned it before when it was a hair salon or whatever, and it didn't do good or something, or like her husband made her change it or some shit. I'm not sure. Huh. Well, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> wow! 
Need to do something behind Lieutenant Kitsuragi's back? Sneak out after he's gone to sleep. Oh, cool. <laughs> so far, he hasn't told us not to do anything, though. He's let me do a lot of really dumb shit. <laughs> Honestly, we've done all sorts of dumb shit, and he's been kind of cool with it. What would there be that he wouldn't let me do? Jeez. All right. I suppose... Holy shit, we've gone for a while. When next we come back, we'll look for the bookstore. Or the, for the pawn shop. I totally thought we were going to go to it this time, but as it turns out, there's a secret weird-ass thing in the back of this fucking bookstore that may be related to some sort of weird-ass curse. I don't know. Either way, the door really hurt me. <laughs> Until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>